We're going to begin with the impact of COVID on the black community. Its impact there is disproportionately high, much higher than among whites. And we were reminded of that this week at a symbolic cemetery memorial service for victims of COVID-19 in Liberty City. Some 1,500 cemetery markers have been placed at this park, each a reminder of a precious life lost. The featured speaker at that memorial ceremony was Miami Congresswoman Frederica Wilson. She is a Democrat who represents the 24th Congressional District. She served in Congress since 2011, and she joins us live now via Skype. Congresswoman, good morning. We are so glad to see you. How are you? Oh, good morning, Michael. How are you? I'm trying to stay safe and hope you're doing the same. Well, we certainly are, but it takes a lot of work. Let's talk, if we can, Congresswoman. You have expressed, I think, just real concern about the plight of the black community because they just are hit so hard, higher than among whites uh, or among Hispanics, by coronavirus. Uh, what is the reason? Is it substandard medical treatments that uh, is available to them? Why is it hitting black people so hard? I think um, it, it's, it's double, number one. And I think it has a lot to do with the kinds of jobs that black people have. And uh, while we're sheltering at home and working from home and social distancing, they have to do the frontline work. And they are not always prepared uh, with hand sanitizer or, or running water or even the proper PPP. So consequently, they are more susceptible to catching the virus. And then when they catch it, many of them have underlying diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, or heart problems, and they die. Right. So this is what is happening. Yeah, well, we understand if somebody is a bus driver or is working in the public sector uh, around other people, they can't take the same precautions as, say, I can because I can work at home, and obviously you can as well. Congresswoman, in July, you, pro you sponsored the Masks for All Act, which would have required everyone to wear, everyone to wear a mask in public or when you couldn't social distance. What happened to your bill? Well, I'm still trying to pass that bill. I have sponsors and um, it is now in energy and commerce and I'm trying to pull it through energy and commerce so that this can be a federal requirement. So it wouldn't depend upon governors or mayors or council people. It would be a federal mandate that every single person in the United States when going out in public would wear a mask. Yeah. And uh, it's called the Mask for All Bill. It's very popular. But you know, I'm getting pushback because there are people in Congress who do not even feel that the coronavirus is real. Yeah. They think it's a, a hoax. So yeah. they don't feel that they should wear a mask. But I'm hoping to get enough people who, with common sense who understand that the president does not know what he's talking about to vote for this bill and pass it. Sure. Well, President-elect Joe Biden doesn't think it's a hoax. He knows it's real. Uh, he is setting an example, as indeed you are, by wearing a mask most of the time. Do you think President Biden should declare a nationwide mask mandate? I do. And I hope it will be one of the first orders of business for him. I know he's preparing a lot of executive orders, and I am praying and I will be lobbying him to make that one of the executive orders that he issues in the first 10 days of his administration. Yeah. You know, Congresswoman, uh, we have seen this week, we just saw pictures of some of the cabinet members, department heads that uh, Mr. Biden is appointing. And it's a it's a really remarkable cross section of experienced people, and it includes, among others, a woman who was a, a uh, in the State Department and Assistant Secretary of State to be the ambassador, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Are you impressed by the uh, nominations you have seen from Mr. Biden? I certainly am, and uh, she is a, a wonderful 
person. She, you know, I'm the champion of the Bring Back Our Girls when they right. kidnapped the Nigerian girls in Nigeria. Well, she was the person who I worked with. She was uh, the uh, representing uh, the United Nations just in Africa in our um, State Department. So now she's going to be over the entire United Nations. And, you know, we have so many issues with the United Nations. They still have not given us all of the money for cholera in Haiti to clean that mess up. So I'm so pleased that she will be there. She's a friend. And then all of them, I'm, I'm proud of that whole uh, group. They, I know them from past uh, administrations and, and uh, I'm just excited. This is going to be a wonderful time for our nation. If we can just transition the power to Mr. Biden without any more delay, oh my goodness, what a difference it will make. I'm just waiting for January 20th. Yeah. Well, the transition does seem to be well underway for the last several days. Uh, President Trump finally said to his administrator at GSA and other departments, uh, go ahead, work with the new Biden administration. He's going to have his first intelligence briefing on Monday. So it does seem to be a, a positive direction. But let me just ask you, you yourself have had some really nasty run-ins with the president. I mean, you were with Maisha uh, Johnson on her way to the funeral of Sergeant LaDavid Johnson when he called and at one point he said to her, uh, he knew what he signed up for. Well, that made you angry. It probably hurt her feelings as well. Uh, I mean, have you been thinking about that here in the wake of the, the defeat of President Trump? You know, I, I, I think about it a lot. And I really thought about it when he came forward and said that people who serve in the military are losers and uh, fools. And uh, I, 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 that hurt me to my heart. And just when he stood with General Kelly, who attacked me for President Trump, trying to make me seem like a liar, and he attacked me to uh, sort of boost up uh, Dr. Mr. Trump. And he stood with General Kelly at his graveside and said, to his young son lying there in Arlington Cemetery, well, what do they get out of it? So, I mean, Mr. Trump is a fool. Let's just put it there. That's a nice term for him. Yeah. And I'm just waiting for him to leave the uh, White House. And when he leaves, he's going to have to walk down Black Lives Matter Plaza taking Mr. Miller and Ivanka and Jared and all the president's men. I can hardly wait for that day. It will be quite a moment. Uh, Congresswoman, um, Congress went home, you and your fellow House members, senators, went home with, without passing a second relief bill. People in your community, in all of our communities, are hurting, they're being evicted from their homes, they don't have money because they've lost their jobs. When is Congress going to pass another relief bill? Well, I'm one of the proponents of passing something. So I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of in the minority right now with the leadership. I'm at odds with them because I feel that we should pass something with the Senate and then when we uh, regain uh, the White House back, we can take up all of the other things that we have missed passing. But number one, unemployment compensation right. needs to be passed. Yeah, if only that, it would help lift up so many people. Yeah, it's a huge issue. Frederica Wilson, good to speak with you. I hope you stay safe, stay well, and we will be following you obviously in the future. You've been reelected another two years, so good, good, good on you, as the Aussies would say. Remember, wash your damn hands and wear your damn mask. <laughs> I will remember. Thank you very much.